Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr Telephone and today I'm going to talk about fault finding on your telephone line. So for example, you've come home one day and your line's dead, your line's noisy, the, the bells are not ringing, whatever the fault is with your telephone line, there's a good chance you'll be able to fix it yourself. Apparently 90% of faults are to do with internal phones and internal wiring. So that means when people phone up BT, 90% of the time the fault will actually be internal and you won't need an engineer out. If you do call an engineer out, you will get a hefty call out charge, it'll be well over £100. I've had to do these charges in the past and it's for really minor, minor things that you can easily do yourself. But the problem is most people don't know about this or they're too scared to do it, they're going to think they're going to break something. But a lot of these things you just have to unplug and then the fault will disappear. You can go out and buy a new phone. Even if you call out an engineer to do this, you've still got to go out and buy a new phone yourself. It's just that you're going to be called charged a hundred odd pound call out charge. So it's best to do a little bit of checking to begin with yourself. Now, these products here, these sockets and stuff, these are all UK based sockets, but the same thing applies worldwide. Most of the phone systems around the world are a two wire system. So although the sockets will look different and the phones may look different, the fault finding theory is the same, basically eliminating, eliminating the fault. So whether you're watching this in Australia, America, Canada, France, New Zealand, it will still be handy to watch the video. So uh, to begin with, just a real basic thing about how a telephone line works. I'm not going to go into too much detail because you can Google this yourself if you're really interested. But basically, you have the telephone exchange, which is where the line comes from, and it works on just two wires from the telephone exchange all the way into your property. It will go via the green street cabinets, it will go via telegraph poles, but it is still just two wires. Even though when it leaves the exchange it might be in a cable with uh, 500 pairs, 100 pairs, however, however big the cable is leaving the, cable, uh, leaving the exchange, it's still only two wires all the way into your house. So when you think of it like that, it does become a lot more simple because it is just two wires. So obviously if there's a break in one of those wires, the result is your line will be dead. If the wires are just barely making a connection, your line will be noisy. If the wires are touching together somewhere, your line will be engaged. So that's it, it's just two wires, so you can do a lot of this yourself. Now, I'm gonna be talking about the NTE 5 Master Socket because this is the easiest way to fault finds. But, if you don't have one of these NTE 5 master sockets, the fault finding will also help even if you've got the older style master sockets. This is a, a flush version that you might have, and this is a, a small little surface socket that you might have. So these are not as good as the NTE 5 master socket, and I'll show you why in a minute, but it will, uh, it, it will still be relevant because you can still unplug your phones no matter which no matter what you have, whether you have the NTE 5 Master Socket or the older versions of the Master Sockets, or if you're in other countries, the same thing applies as well. So uh, every single day, the service providers like BT and TalkTalk, Talk, they're making thousands of pounds every day from customers for very, very, very simple faults. And these are faults that you can easily fix yourself. So just spend a bit of time watching this video, Think about what I'm showing you and apply it in your own house and 90% of the time it will fix the fault. If the fault turns out to be external in a manhole at the top of the pole at the exchange, obviously there's nothing you can do about that, but then you won't be charged because that, that will be covered by your line rental. So if the fault is external, it isn't down to you. So by doing these checks, you safely can eliminate any problems that you have put on the line because you own all your own equipment. So you own your own extensions, your own phone, your sky boxes, your alarm, anything that you plug into the line. The service provider will only maintain up to the master socket and it will only maintain up to the master socket if there is no damage on it. If you've been doing some decorating and you've pulled the wire off the architrave and it's dangling loose, they'll probably say that that's caused a fault and it will be chargeable. If your socket's damp, they'll say that you've allowed damp into your house and that will be chargeable. If, uh, if for example, you've had some building work and something's happened and they've some, somebody's changed something, then that will be chargeable. So they will only maintain up to your master socket if you've caused no fault now or in the past on the, uh, on the telephone line. So basically, I'm going to talk about to begin with the NT5 master socket, but just watch this and then go on. If you've got the older style master sockets, watch, uh, just watch it past the NT5 master socket, so I will show you how to do fault finding past that. Or, 
If you haven't got a screwdriver and you can't be bothered to do the screwdriver test just yet, then you can unplug the phones and do the testing that way. But it is easier if you do just get your little crosshead, get yourself a little crosshead screwdriver. And what you need to do is you need to just undo the two screws on the NTE5 master socket. You can tell the NTE5 master socket because it has a split one here. These old ones don't have any splits, they're just a face plate. But on this one here, it has a split plate. And the idea is, by unplugging this, you've now disconnected your extension from your line. This part here is your test socket. So by plugging into here, you're testing purely the line coming into the house. So what you need to do is, for example, if you come home and your line is dead, noisy, cutting out, bell's not ringing, whatever the problem, go to your master socket, if you have one, if you have an NTE5 master socket, if you don't keep watching, I'll show you how to do the rest in a minute, but if you have one of these, nice and simple, you get your phone and you plug it into there, okay? It's always handy just to use a corded phone. You pick it up, if it's working fine here, whatever the problem you had, if it's now disappeared, you know that the line itself is okay, don't call your service provider, there's no point. Unless you wanna get the call out charge, don't call your service provider. If you're not happy doing any of this work, why don't you get a local engineer? It's a lot cheaper, it'd be about half the price, so look in the yellow pages, get a local engineer, or if you're feeling a bit more confident, have a look at my shop, mrtelephone.co.uk, and you'll see that I'll sell all these products and you can have a go yourself at doing it. So basically, you plug your phone into there and uh, see if it's dead or if it's live. If it's perfect, you know that the line itself is okay up to here, so the problem's with yourself. If it doesn't work, don't just rely on that phone because this phone could be faulty. You might not know this phone could have gone faulty. So always try a separate phone or borrow a phone from your neighbours or try your phone in your neighbour's house and if the phone works, you know your phone's okay. By trying two phones, you've now eliminated the phones. So if the phones are okay, sorry, if that phone's faulty and this phone's working, you know the line is okay, that the fault is on the phone again. So uh, it's always best to try two phones because the very phone you're doing your testing with could be the phone that's putting the fault on the line. So that's nice and straightforward. If it works here, do not call your service provider out, okay? If it doesn't work here and you've tried two phones and you've made sure that you haven't damaged the cable, if, it's not, if the socket's not damp, if nobody's pulled the wire off the wall or you've done something else outside, if, if, if everything's as it was when the engineer installed the line, then it won't be chargeable. In which case, call your service provider out and that will, your line rental will cover up to the test socket on the master socket. Now, let's say that it's working fine here, that means your fault's inside, or let's say you haven't got an NTE master socket, you've got the old style master sockets. What you need to do is, you need to start doing a bit of elimination. So the first thing you need to do is unplug everything so for example, this is just a quick mock-up of what I've done here. So you've got your master socket, you've got uh, an extension socket, you've got your filters plugged into the extension socket, you might have a junction box in between with wires going up, off to upstairs extensions or extensions to the kitchen. You know, check out exactly what you've got and then it will make more sense when it comes to your fault finding. But the first thing you need to do, this could be your sort of basic setup here. You've got your master socket with uh, either a double adapter, a triple adapter or a quad adapter. You'll have your, uh, you know, your micro filter coming out of it for your broadband, which connects to your telephone. You'll have another extension lead going off, which might be just a, you know, a plug-in extension lead. Then you'll have your wired, your wired extensions going off. It could go via a junction box to uh, a telephone socket here, again with a micro filter in. So you come home and your line's noisy, your line's dead. Whatever the problem is, you need to do some fault finding. So. You've checked it at the test socket and everything's working fine, so you know that the fault's inside, or again, you've got one of these older master sockets and you haven't got a test socket, so you need to do fault finding similar to what I'm gonna show you now. So basically, first thing you need to do is find out, is it your, is it your phones? So what you need to do is unplug everything. So unplug everything from there, unplug everything from this other socket, I don't know if you can see that, yeah. And uh, you get your phone and you plug it in, directly into here, okay? You pick it up and you're like, oh, it's working. So it's something that I've plugged in, which is faulty. So then unplug that, and to start with, plug in your double adapter or quad adapter. Plug it in here. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working. And then plug in your microfilter. Yes, it's working. And then plug in your little cheapy extension lead and oh, it's gone dead. So then you know, oh, actually, well, it must be my extension lead. Let's just double check that. Unplug that one in. Yes, it's working. Plug it back in again. It's dead. So you now know that your extension lead is faulty, in which case, just bin it. If they're any cheap, get yourself another one. So uh, by doing a simple bit of fault finding like that, you've now eliminated something yourself. Another thing, let's say, let's pretend now it wasn't the extension lead. Let's pretend it's to do with the wire in itself. So again, we've tested it in the test socket and we know that the line is okay. Yeah, so we tested it there. So we know it's okay, so we know it's not a BT problem or a service provider problem. So unplug that and plug that back in. And now we test the line and obviously we know the line's dead because we haven't actually unplugged anything. Yeah, so we know the line's dead. So now bit by bit, unplug everything. So you could unplug all of this in one go if you want and then plug your phone in there and you think, oh, it's still dead. So you know now it's not your double adapter or your micro filter. So you now know that it's uh, a problem with your wiring. So how do, you, how do you work this one out now? So basically what you now need to do is you need to trace the wire from here and you'll see, for example, it might go to a junction box first or it might go to an extension. It just depends how it's been wired up. It can go from extension to extension to extension. From the master socket, it can split off to two extensions. It can split off to one extension from the master socket and the junction box. And from the junction box, it can split off to one, two, three extensions. But trace the wire to here. Note of where the colors go, because it's not always standard. And uh, uh, you will forget. Once you pull those wires out, you won't remember where they go. So take a picture from your phone or a digital camera, get a pen and paper, write down exactly what goes to where. So for example, on this one here, we've got the white blues to number one. We've got the blues to number two, we've got the white oranges to number three, and we've got the oranges to number four. And this is all standard because I've just done a quick mock-up myself, but your house might have color codes from throughout the years. The color codes will be different, the terminations might be different. So make a note of what you've done, and then you can always put it back to how it was. So as soon as you pull those wires out, you will forget. You think, oh, I'll remember that, but then once you get to your second and third cable and you're going back half an hour later, you will forget. So just scribble it down and then you know, worst case scenario, you can put it back exactly as it was and you haven't gained anything, but you haven't lost anything what either. What you can do is, first of all, disconnect the fees, yeah? And then plug the phone in. Make sure that these wires are not touching each other. Plug the phone in again. If the line is working now, we know that this cable is okay. In which case, then, we're going to connect it back up. I'm only doing this roughly, but we've made a note of where the colours go. So we're just going to connect it back up again. Either using a proper punch down tool or the cheapy tool. With the cheapy tool, you will have to snip the wires yourself. Okay, and then what you now need to do is disconnect another wire. So this is the wire going off to one of my extensions. So I'm gonna pull that one out. Again, plug your phone back into the master socket and I'll say, oh, it's still dead. So I know that unless I've got two faults on the line, I know that this cable is okay. So what we now need to do is disconnect this cable and plug this cable back in. So can you see I'm just working through methodically, disconnecting, disconnecting as we go along, and testing, disconnecting and testing. So punch those wires all back in. Okay, and now plug the phone in. Oh, and we got dial tone again. So basically, the fault was on this wire here. It's been cut and dampness has gone into it. But that's just a simple, you know, a simple little explanation. You may not have a junction box. You might have different type of sockets, but the same thing applies. It's just methodically breaking it down bit by bit to find the fault. And in this case, 
you don't need to do anything. You just disconnect this wire, throw it away, and uh, or just leave it disconnected. It might be tacked to the skirting board, it might be painted over, so you might not want to rip it all out, but just disconnect it. It can no longer put a fault on the line if it's disconnected, and you don't even have to buy anything because this wasn't used anyway, it was just a cut wire. If, for example, you've proved the fault onto your extension socket, then go and get yourself another extension socket, either from someone like me or pop down to the you know, local hardware shop and you'll be able to pick up an extension socket. But by just breaking it down bit by bit, you can do so much fault finding yourself and you don't need specialist equipment to do it. When you get an engineer out, they do have specialist equipment and it's a lot quicker, but you don't have to do it. You can do this simply yourself by just making a note of everything you do. So if you go to a socket and they're using blue to two and orange to five instead of you know white blue, it might be a, uh, a, the older style cable or the very new style cable that has blue and orange, then uh, make a note of it. And you know you can put it back exactly how it was so if you do get in a real muddle and you can't get to the bottom of it and you have to call an engineer out, at least it's back to how it was to begin with. So, uh, yes, are often on things like microfilters or a phone or a skybox. So nice and simply, by just unplugging it, you've now eliminated the fault. So I'm just going to talk about the, the different, uh, different faults there are on a telephone line. Now, simple faults that I've come across in the past are to do with phones. So for example, the phone might be wall mounted and what sometimes happens is the little hook here can wear away and then the phone without the customer knowing will become slightly loose like that. And that's the same as your phone being off the hook. So when people ring in, it will be engaged. Another thing that can happen is the buttons can get jammed up with dirt or if it's in the kitchen with grease and stuff like that. And then they go to dial a number out and it's not dialing properly and they think it's a problem with the telephone line. It's not, it's a problem with the phone. So they go to ring out and it says this number is not obtainable and it's because it's a problem with the numbers on the phone or it might be, yeah, it might be missing the, the numbers completely so when you're pressing it, it's, it's, it's not doing anything. So uh, again, nice easy fault to fix. On the cordless phones, when the batteries go, often you get a real hiss on the line. People think it's a hiss, is this a problem with the telephone line? It's not, it's a problem with the cordless phones. So if you pick up your phone and it's like a lot of the time, it's because the batteries have gone flat and uh, yeah, you get, a, you get a hiss on the line. Also, with cordless phones like this, if the power cable goes, then if, if, if there's a power cut in your house, they're not gonna work. A corded phone will still work with a power cut, but a cordless phone won't work with a power cut. So these are the common things when you ring up uh, when you ring up BT or whoever your service provider is. These are the common faults that will be reported. You've got NDT, which is no dial tone. So no dial tone is a straightforward one. It's where, like I said earlier, there's two wires from the exchange to your house. It means that one of those wires has broken somewhere. If one of those wires have broken, then you will have no dial tone. Or if both wires have broken, if you've been doing so, if you've been cutting your hedge outside and you've cut through the the, the telephone cable then now obviously both wires will be broken. So no dial tone means that there's nothing there. The line is completely and utterly dead. So when you pick it up, there's nothing there. Now, yes, it can be internal. For example, you could have, you know, you could have damaged something or had some building work, but normally a no dial tone one will probably be external because you've probably got two or three kilometers of wire going from the exchange all the way to your house. So there's a good chance that one of those crimps somewhere has broken, yeah? Or an engineer might have been doing some work and accidentally knocked your line off. Now a noisy one, NSY, noisy. Noisy is a really, really common one. And when I was an engineer, we were always getting called out on noisy faults. A noisy line is, is the hardest line to find, hardest fault to find because a lot of the time it's intermittent. So it's not there all the time. But basically a, a noisy line is where the wires are connecting, but not connecting very well. So they're just barely connecting. If they were completely broken, it's nice and easy because it becomes a no dial tone and then the, the fault system will pick it up. So when you ring up to report your fault, they will say, yes, you have got a fault on your line because we can see a break in the wires. But a noisy line won't show up on a fault system because the wires are just barely connecting. Other things that can cause a noisy line is dampness. So dampness in a socket, uh, a phone, you know, a bad, again, bad lead on a phone, that can cause it. So a noisy line can be fixed by yourself. Uh, which is uh, which is good because you can do fault finding. So with a noisy line, you can do the fault finding yourself. Another one is cutting off, CO, cutting off. So that's when the line cuts off in the middle of a phone call. Again, that's due to the wires just barely connecting. So for example, you've got a telephone wire going across the road from a telegraph pole and 
every time it sways in the wind, it's a windy day, those, the brake comes and then it goes back again and it makes. So every time it touches, the line is made and every time the wind moves or whatever, then the line breaks. So that's cutting off. Cutting off will normally be associated with a noisy line because it would be unlikely that if the wires are that bad enough that they're coming apart, when they are together, the chances are it will be a noisy line. Now, bell's not ringing. This is a, another common one. This is where you can pick up the phone and it works, but when you can't hear incoming calls. Now, this can be one of three things. First thing, which is quite common, is a problem with the actual exchange. So the telephone exchange, the equipment in the exchange, the, 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 the ringing signal is not coming through. So there's nothing you can do about that. That's an exchange fault. The other thing it can be, it can be the capacitor in the master socket. This, uh, this yellow thing here in the master socket. If these go faulty, if I was to get wires now and snip the capacitor, the line wouldn't ring. So I have come across it before where the capacitors have gone faulty or for example, the, the solder, there's a solder break in it. They might have had a knock and the solder breaks there and then it's the same as the capacitor not being connected. That will cause your phone not to ring. And the last thing is the phone itself. The bell might be turned off it. So make sure the bell is turned on the phone because some phones you can adjust the volume. If you've got it set to off or all the way down, then you won't hear that particular phone ring because these sockets themselves don't ring the capacitor allows the phone to ring. It's the phone that does the ringing. So if your phone's faulty, that's going to cause it not to ring. So again, you can, uh, you, know, you can eliminate that one yourself. If you've plugged two good phones into your test socket and the net will not work in, then it's down to your service provider. Okay, PET, permanent engaged tone. A permanent engaged tone is when the wires are touching together. So it's the same as you lifting the phone off, off the hook. So again, it could be the phone like I mentioned earlier, if the phone was, on, you thought it was on there, but if it was just not fully in, so it's worn away and it's coming off, it's the same as it being off the hook. Or if the wires touch together. So let's say now if the, the cable is going overhead to your house and it's rubbing against a tree and it's a damp day, a wet day, then if it's rubbing against a tree and the wires are exposed, as soon as a bit of water comes there, your line will be permanent engaged tone. So on your end, you think the line's dead, but the people ringing you will just get an engaged tone because what happens is the wires are touching together is the same as the phone being off the hook. The other thing that can happen is you will have dial tone and uh, it might be a little bit noisy, but what happens is when it rings, the higher voltage comes down the line and it arcs the gap. So let's say if there's a bit of dampness on the two wires, high voltage comes down, it jumps the gap, it arcs the gap, and the customer thinks you've answered because they phoned you, it gives half a ring, like boom, and it connects. So as soon as that voltage comes down, it connects the line. But when you pick up the phone, there's nothing there because it's, it's arced before your phone. So it's shorted out before your phone. So you think nobody's there, but the, uh, the person ringing you thinks you're answered your phone. They think, why, why are they not speaking to me? So that's called a ring trip. Okay, but it's the same as a permanent engaged tone. So permanent engaged tone, they're normally an internal fault. So what's happened is you've got your wires, they go off to a junction box, and for example, dampness gets into this broken, this cut cable here, and that will become a permanent engaged tone because the wire is now shorted out, the two wires are shorted out from the dampness. Again, let's say if this cable here going off to your extension socket is going under the carpets and one of the gripper rods has gone through the cable, then that will short out the cable. If it's under the carpets and it's been trampled on, again, the wires can touch together. So anywhere where the wires are shorting out, touching together, will cause an engaged home. Normally, that's an internal fault, so you should be able to sort that out yourself. Again, by unplugging this and then testing the wires here and just breaking it down bit by bit, extension to extension, disconnecting one extension, disconnecting another extension, that will, that will eventually, you will eliminate the fault. So you won't need any specialist tools. A phone engineer will use specialist tools because it's quicker, but you can do this yourself just by a process of elimination, by disconnecting, disconnecting and pushing back and disconnecting. Obviously you're gonna need a uh, punch down tool some expensive one or a cheapy one for a, a, a pound, pound something. You will want need one of these to punch the wires back into your sockets, yeah? But again, buying one of these is a lot cheaper than paying a hundred and something pounds for your service provider.
Other ones is NU, number of unobtainable. All outgoing calls get the number you have dialed as not being recognized. So an NU again is normally either an exchange fault or it could be because you haven't paid your bill. So they might have put an outgoing calls barred. So if, if you're having problems paying, they might put an outgoing calls barred. Uh, block on your line so when you go to ring out it allows people to ring in but when you go to make a chargeable call it will say number not obtainable or you'll get the uh, let's say if these were gummed up with grease or dirt then you're trying to ring so for example you want to phone a mobile and you're doing a 0778 or whatever 0771 and let's say if the O is gummed up every time you go to press the O it's gummed up so it's not recognizing it so you're just pressing 771 as far as the telephone exchange is uh, concerned and uh, that's going to be an unrecognisable number because it doesn't make sense. It's like you're misdialing. Even though you're not misdialing, the phone, when you're pressing O, it's not registering because it's either gone 40 or it's gummed up with dirt or grease. So that's another common one that you can fix yourself. Right, ESF, Exchange Select Service Fault. This could be something like if you had caller display. So most times, if you have a fault on one of your services, like your, uh, you know, your call waiting, your caller display, your messages, if it's a 1571 service, you know, like an exchange based service, then it will normally be an exchange fault. But again, it could be your caller display on your phone. If the caller display packs up on your phone, then there's no point in calling an engineer out because he will just plug in his caller display, make a call from his mobile, and if it comes through, you will be charged again. So get one of your neighbor's phone, borrow a phone off your whoever, bring your phone next door if they've got caller display, and Ring, ring from your mobile. If the call comes up, you know your phone's working fine, so you know then it's not your phone, that is a problem with the exchange. So go ahead and ring your service provider. And uh, the last one, this is, this is mainly UK based for bells ringing, because in other countries it's just a two wire system, but in the UK, on the internal wiring, it runs down three wires because you have the ringer wire, which is not really needed nowadays, but some old phones still need the ringer wire. So bells ringing continuously, BR, bells ringing, that is basically when your, your phone's just going constantly. And the reason it does that is because uh, there's a, a fault in the wire somewhere where uh, the ringer wire is picking up voltage from one of your two wires that provide the phone line outside. It's picking up voltage from it. So the bells on the phone is getting a constant voltage, so they're ringing constantly. So uh, with that one again, unplug all your phones and then just plug in one at a time. It could be a dodgy phone, or more than likely it will be an extension, again, probably to do with dampness somewhere or where it's been crushed under the carpet. But again, you can eliminate that by starting at the master socket and working your way throughout the house, disconnecting each step of the way and testing. So for example, you've got your master socket, then an extension. So just go to that first extension and then disconnect the other extensions going away and test at that first extension. If it works there, you know the line up to that first extension is good. So then go to the second, push it, put the wires back together and go to the second extension. If every, and disconnect the wires going on from there. If everything's fine at the second extension, again, you know the wires up to that point are good and the fault goes on and on and on. If you go to the second extension and it's no good and it's, you know it's good at the first extension, you know the fault either li lies, lies with the wires between the first and second extension or the second extension socket itself. So do the fault finding. Pull out the wires from the extension socket, see if the fault disappears. If it does, you know the fault is with the ex second extension socket. So just by doing simple fault finding, you can save a lot, a lot of money because so many times in the past, another common one was skyboxes. Skyboxes have a little modem in there that dial out so that Sky can you know, test the box and to make sure that that box is still at that property. So uh, what often happens is it will go to dial out and it will keep the line open because there's, there's a fault on it, it needs resetting. So I would go to a property, they say, yeah, 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 the, the line's completely dead, I've got nothing when I pick the phone up, yet when you ring in from your mobile, it's engaged. And sure enough, you go to the master socket, plug your phone in, it's absolutely fine. Every time you plug the front plate back in, the, the, the fault comes back. So all you've got to do is go around and the customer says, yeah, I've unplugged all my phones, but they forgot to unplug their skybox. You unplug your skybox and the fault goes away. Plug it back in again and the fault's there. Sometimes when you plug it back in, the fault's gone because by unplugging it, it's reset itself. Or you could turn the skybox on and off at the mains and that will reset it. So sometimes they seize up, so that's a common one. Another thing, uh, alarms, a lot of alarms are connected to the telephone line. And again, 
they dial out so they can keep the line open. So again, unplug your alarm, see if that causes the fault. Uh, years ago, the same thing used to happen with dial-up modems, and in other countries, they still might use dial-up modems. In the UK now, they don't really use them, but uh, uh, you know, around the world, they might still use the dial-up modems. This is before broadband. They can keep the line open. So again, unplug that. As I said earlier, 90% of faults are internal, so you can do all this yourself and save yourself a packet, because when years ago when I was an engineer, sometimes we used to charge a customer, it used to be over 200 quid to go there and do simple fault finding, because what the engineer will say is, he'll come along, he'll undo two screws, plug in his phone into there and say, the BT line is okay, or the TalkTalk Talk line, or whoever your service provider is, the line is okay, you've got the fault on the internal wiring, at the moment, you've got a hundred and something pound call out charge. If you want me to fault find further, the call out charge will be the hourly rate is 80 pound plus fat or 90 pound plus fat. So basically, by just going throughout the house and unplugging somebody's phone, they're getting over a 200 pound bill, which you can do yourself and then you can go out and spend that money and enjoy yourself. It's an if you've done the test at the master socket, or you've done what you can do, and the fault's there, and you're not confident doing it, at least then you know you're going to be charged, and if you know you're going to be charged, it's not, it's not so irritating. Uh, it's more irritating when it's a shock to you, but if you know you're going to get charged a hundred and something pound, at least you're prepared for it, and then you're happy to do it, or get an engineer out of the local yellow pages, or local paper, and uh, it will probably be half that price, uh, and it will be the it will be the the same service you know should be the same service you provide it might even be a better service because it's more personable than having to go through your uh, service providers. So next time you have a fault in your line, don't automatically phone your service providers. Do a bit of testing to begin with, and uh, you might well find 90% of the time you should be able to fix that fault yourself, and you won't have to be put on hold for half an hour speaking to someone that's just reading off a script. Uh, yeah, so that's it basically. Hope this video helps. Please share it with other people because then they might have, you know, you might not have a telephone fault right now, but somebody else might have a fault tomorrow, in a week, next year, and it will come in handy to know this info because a, a lot of people think that, oh no, my service provider maintains everything. They do not maintain everything. So by doing this, you're going to uh, you're going to help yourself out. So share it with others. You'll help other people out. If you've liked it, I know it's gone on a bit, but if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, because people that don't like it will definitely give a thumbs down. So, uh, yeah, if you need any of these products and you fancy doing the work yourself, please go to uh, www.mrtelephone.co.uk and uh, please subscribe to my channel for more how-to videos in the future. Have a look at my past videos. I've done loads of videos, much more technical, about how to wire up master sockets and extension sockets and ADSL faceplates. What I forgot to mention is, if you've got your ADSL faceplate plugged into your master socket, it's exactly the same fault finding. The ADSL fa faceplate takes the place off the front plate, so it doesn't matter what you've got plugged into it, this is still the property of your service provider, the test socket. So whatever you've plugged into it via the faceplate or an ADSL faceplate is your property. So uh, yeah, check out the other videos, you will find them useful. And uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye now.